Welcome back to our catapult semi-finals in the biotech category. As a reminder, each team has five minutes to pitch and we will be closely monitoring the time when they or if they should run over, we will be strict and conclude the pitch. After the pitch, our jury then has equally five minutes to ask questions, to dive deeper and to find out any more that they would like to know. They will be making their score immediately after the pitch. To all the pitchers who are in the semi-finals today, our message is that you are all winners, so have uh, uh, really this opportunity to have um, a great time to enjoy your pitch, to believe in yourself and to believe in your pitches as well. And we wish everybody throughout the day the very best of luck. Enjoy your time. So we're going to begin in Italy. We're going to start with our first um, startup from ADEX Biosciences, Michela Gastaldi. Michela, the floor is yours. Thank you. Thank you very much. So can you can we move to the next? OK, great. So do you know how many healthcare professionals are exposed every day to formaldehyde? In Europe, 200,000 medical operators undergo everyday formal GI exposure, with a five-fold higher risk of developing respiratory tracts cancer. Formaldehyde is a cancerogenic and mutagenic substance and is banned in Europe. However, without a safe and valid alternative, formaldehyde is still used in a hospital. Good morning, my name is Michele Gastaldi. I'm the CEO of Addax Biosciences and we found a solution for that. Formaldehyde is still used informally as histological fixative in lack of a safe and valid alternative. Every day, millions of biopsies are operated to patients in public and private structure. Biopsy tissue are fixed and carried out into profiled formalin vials and brought to the pathologist for diagnosis. So every day, 100,000 of medical operators, while they are providing their support to patients, undergo harmful conditions. The solution we propose is GAF, glyoxal acid free. It's our innovative reagent, which stands as a unique formalin alternative, which provides comparable or better efficacy in the full range of application of formalin, but at the same time, non-carcinogenic, non-toxic. GAF is safe, regulation compliant, provide environmental benefit in terms of uh, air emission pollutants and to psychological impact for the waste. It brings to the end user a lower total cost of ownership, reducing the insurance cost and avoiding risk of sanction and court. GAF is highly scalable, its manufacturing process is standard and its use is easy. We have a strong IP position. GAF patent has been already granted in Europe and US. Several independent validation trials took place into European hospital. Torino hospital validation trials has been already successfully completed. Barcelona, Manchester, Candiolo Hospital multicentric validation trial already provides an interim report highlighting the optimal preservation of the tissue and the diagnostic value of the preparation. Conclusive results are going to be issued by the end of this year. GAF is CE marked, received the FDA approval, and we have a lab where we are already producing it. 
Our total addressable market is huge. 11 million liters per year in Europe, 70 million liters per year worldwide. We set a conservative market segment opportunity target aiming to achieve within five years 10% of the European market, becoming profitable since year three, uh, supporting our internal production capacity with outsourcing. Our team is composed by executives and academics with a wide range of expertise, and we are backed by an international advisory board composed by leading personality within the business and the European pathologist community. So we have a product is validated, is uh, patented, is C marked. We have a lab where we already produce it. We are now looking for international scale up. We are seeking for an investment of two million in order to establish an outsourcing agreement, distribution agreement, and boosting our sales development. So for a sustainable healthcare, please join us towards a formal in free hospital. Thank you. Thank you very much, Michaela. Well done. Thank you for our first and opening pitch. Good morning to the jury. Good morning. Very good to see you. Who would like to ask morning. a first question to Michaela? May I ask? Okay, yes. Julian, go on. Okay. Thank Who you. would like to go first? Uh, thank you, Michaela, for, for the presentation. Um, I've uh, used a lot of formaldehyde uh, myself, um, and I, I can definitely see uh, the demand there for uh, an agent that's not toxic. Um, I was wondering about uh, the comparison between your uh, reagent and, and formaldehyde. Um, in terms of maybe immunocytochemistry, can you say anything about the quality of the images, the stability of the samples? Have you uh, compared head to head um, and, and, and do you see any differences? Actually, we um, made uh, several international trials I mentioned um, and uh, we have been able to um, highlight that um, the efficacy and the performances of GAF are equivalent to formalin in terms of uh, immunohistochemistry and histochemistry analysis and diagnosis. So the multicentric trials uh, we have been performing and we are going to finalize uh, by the end of this year is going to um, highlight this aspect and uh, this uh, um, uh, Variability of performances between uh, formaldehyde and, and GAF. Um, look into tissue fixation, look into preservation of the nuclei, of the cytoplasm, and uh, oh, along the full path of application of formalin, um, performances and results are uh, absolutely comparable. Thank you so much. Do we have a second question? Yes, I go to Julien Elric. Thank you. Thank you for the presentation. So I know this is uh, EIT Health. <clears throat> Nevertheless, uh, did you consider applying your product um, in other industries such as cosmetic, food industry? That's a, a really great point. We know that formaldehyde is a very um, severe agent, which is used across uh, many industrial sector, furniture, but also paper, um, leathers. So it, uh, it is um, uh, applied very largely. Uh, the product we have developed and uh, we are producing is aiming uh, to fix the um, issue within the histological fixed. Nevertheless, we um, have uh, uh, some studies uh, to um, evaluate the potential application of our patent also to um, different uh, fields. Um, but uh, we are still uh, 
uh, at the um, early stage on that. So uh, we are now to provide the result and uh, um, to, to, to show the, the, the stage of our um, project uh, referring to the histological and fixative field. But you are totally right that that is a very uh, wider um, problem and that's, uh, there are many different uh, potential applications of that. We have time for a third question. I know somebody would like to ask a third question. Please go ahead. May I ask you shortly, um, do you have any market as attraction today, do you have any labs using it? So what's your... Um... Uh, we basically um, have uh, um, developed a pioneering network uh, pool where we have been uh, uh, trialing and testing our product. And uh, we think that uh, uh, the way to move forward will be to leverage best practice uh, that have been uh, uh, developed into those uh, uh, center of excellence uh, to uh, spread out the awareness of, of this uh, um, okay. opportunity that we will offer to the market. Thank you very much, Michaela. Thank you. And thank you to the jury for our first pitch coming from Italy. Now, because we're in Europe, we're going to be going to many different countries this morning. We will be um, going through to now to Sweden, to Stockholm, in fact, in Sweden. And we are meeting Aplex Bio with Umari, Nassim, who's going to give us our second pitch this morning. Umare, it's over to you. Thank you very much. Hello, everybody. It's great to be here with you today. Uh, my name is Umar Nassim. I'm the founder and CEO of Aplex Bio, also inventor of the technology. Let's see now. Ah. At Apex Bio, we believe that the approach to healthcare is outdated. Most drugs are pretty bad for treating complex diseases. Uh, why is this? Because all humans are unique, and so are our diseases too. Which is why we should move away from our current approach. When we treat people in a group, it is no surprise that there's room for improvement. If we can guide treatment, the outlook becomes very different. If we do this at scale, we may even be able to capture disease early, all while reducing costs, side effects, and pain for patients. This is the future we see, and it is enabled by precision diagnostics at massive scale. At Aplex, we do not develop the biomarkers or fingerprints, because many have already. We build a highway for these fingerprints to reach patients better. How are we building this highway? By replacing the limiting step. Today, there are many players that already have assays and biomarkers of interest that they want to measure with an omics approach. The key limiting step is the readout methods. Many times, sequencers are used and they are uh, very slow and expensive. We replace uh, the readout with a much simpler solution, making it faster, significantly more cost efficient and scalable. And we do this with an innovation that addresses the problem at its core, which is the multiplexity of fluorescent probes. Today, there's a limit around five. We have developed hyperprobes that break this barrier and can in a single step reach a multiplexity beyond 100. So we do not have to rely on sequencing anymore. See for your, oh, wrong side. Let's see. See for yourselves. <laughs> uh, isn't it beautiful? Our technology impacts these markets that are all enablers of the next generation of healthcare. And when taking a look at the landscape, it starts to get interesting. High multiplexity is reached with complex workflows like sequencing or with advanced microfluidics and instrumentation. 
we offer a solution as simple and accessible as uh, conventional ELISA and PCR kits, but with state-of-the-art performance, making our solution available to everyone and cost-efficient to scale. We have a strong IP portfolio, uh, one PCT application protecting the method and two priority applications protecting new nanoparticle structures. That is the core of our technology. Our customers range from R&D to diagnostic companies, pharma and healthcare systems in that order. Our strategy for execution is to enable as many labs as possible access to state-of-the-art technology that we provide. We do this by selling kits, consumables and software. And what's neat is that the customers can use standard fluorescent microscopes without the need for additional instrumentation to get started. And when we want to scale testing, our solution can be automated to handle large demands. We have a strong team. Uh, and many of us have gone through the journey of building companies before. We have a strong network in the US and have since the beginning had a tight collaboration with Professor Mats Nilsson, who has multiple times commercialized technologies in the field before. Now we are raising 5 million euros starting 2022. Our company was founded in 2020 and have already developed a working prototype. With the funds, we will be able to launch our beta product, set up a production QC line, and start taking on customers. We will also develop a prototype for spatial analysis, which is the other leg of what we will revolutionize. And with that, I would like to invite you to join us in the next revolution of biology. Happy to take questions. Thank you very much indeed. Uh, that's wonderful, Umare. Let's turn to our pit, uh, to our jury, sorry, to ask their questions for the pitch from Ada Aplex Bio. Over to our jury. Who would like to go first by a show of hands? I think we have um, Alan. Thank you for the pitch. Um... I mean, very interesting um, potential applications. I guess there are so many different applications. I was just interested in terms of, as you step back and think of where you would focus initially um, to get that initial traction in, in the market. And, and maybe you could give us a little color in terms of that initial commercial rollout. Thank you. Yes, that's a, thank you for that excellent question. In the beginning, we will focus on nucleic acid and protein detection and primarily nucleic acid detection is very interesting so for example today uh, doing covid testing with pcr kits you can uh, distinguish whether you have covid or not so that's one application that we are working on where uh, with our test you not only can see if you have covid or not you can see which mutation you have uh, whether there is any other virus that is causing the symptoms that is not due to COVID, so you don't just get a negative answer. And we uh, project that the price will be the same as a PCR test. So you're getting a lot more information uh, with the same uh, effort, let's say. Thank you. Do we have another? Yes, let's go to Emma. Please. Hello. Um, thank you for, for your pitch and uh, interesting approach. Maybe in, in relation, uh, continuing with Alan's question in, in terms of getting into the commercial uh, part, will you plan your kits or, or let's say the, the next uh, uh, devices to be uh, used with existing equipment that is available now in the different centers or you're planning to develop um, your exclusive uh, equipment to be used with your technology? Thank you very much for the question. Uh, we primarily want to plug in to hardware that is already out there. So we consider the novelty in our approach to be uh, in the liquid, in the chemistry. Uh, there may be some tweaks that are needed, but most, uh, for the most part, we will implement in off-the-shelf instruments. But there's an uh, interesting approach, and there, that is that one of the diagnostic companies out there have acquired a company that has is based on a similar, let's say, biomolecular assay approach that we are using, and they have already a uh, hardware. So, and we are actually discussing uh, whether we can implement uh, 
in that hardware system. Fine. We have, yes, let's go to Renato, who I believe has a question. Thank you very, thank you very much for the presentation. My question maybe is a bit naive, but uh, uh, I had seen a large team. So how, how do you cover the, the OPEX to, to, you know, to pay the expenses around this uh, wonderful team and how much have you raised so far? Thank you. Uh, I'm sorry, I didn't, I'm not sure I got the, the whole question. So please fill in if I'm not answering. Uh, for now, we have uh, in our seed round, we raised uh, 600K euro. And then in the acceleration round, 800K uh, euro. And now we are raising 5 million euro to expand the team and grow it. So that's starting in 2022. <laughs> Thank you. Yes, Lina, I see you would like to ask a question. Go ahead. Great presentation. Thank you very much. My question would be concerning the multiplexing, as there is quite a lot of potential certainty for this technology. Are there any other companies out there of which you know already that they are going into a similar direction? Um, what would be their, the, the direct competition and how do you, you know, how are you different from them really? Yes. Uh, thank you very much for this great question also. So we've got, uh, for example, uh, one company in particular that's a good comparable, which is Luminex. Uh, however, they don't make probes, which is a big difference from our approach. We make probes. And I would say they are the closest one. And then we've got other technologies like Stila technology, but that's based on digital PCR and multiplexing. So that's like integrating with the whole uh, system. So you're achieving multiplexity. It's not true multiplexity as we call it because it's based on a system uh, performing the multiplexing. In our case, it's really only the pros and this is why it can be implemented so easily and with such low costs. Thank you Thanks. very much. Time is in fact up. So thank you for a great pitch and thank you to the jury for a great set of questions. Let's now move to France for our next pitch from the uh, company Sideros, and we welcome Lucy, Lucy Mondelet. Mondelet. Over to you, Lucy. Over to you, Lucy. Thank you, Alison. Hello, everyone. I am Lucy Mondelet, the CEO of Sideros. So let's talk about iron to fight resistance in cancer. Sorry. So, despite all innovations in cancer treatment, there are still 10 million cancer deaths in 2020. If we do not care about developing uh, disruptive strategies, that number will increase up to 16 million in 2040. But why are we faced to that issue? It's because of cells, named persistent cancer cells, that can escape conventional therapies leading to relapse and metastasis. How do they resist and develop strategies to escape conventional therapy? It's because of iron, and this is a breakthrough discovery of our co-founder. Iron is a fuel of persistent cancer cells, helping them to modify their phenotype and survive, leading them to escape conventional therapies. And we have a solution. This is ironomycin. It's a small molecule that can sequester iron through its specific radical represented here in orange, like the color code of iron in chemistry. And let me talk about how it works. Ironomycin diffuses into the cells, reach the lysosome where it can sequester iron. By sequestering iron in the lysosome, it depletes it from all the other compartments of the cells, so the cells cannot access to its fuel anymore. So it's a stress for the cells, leading to its destruction. With these first-in-class molecules, we have a proof of concept in a PDX mouse model, showing that when we treat the tumor with ironomacin, in reimplanted in new animals, we prevent relapses because we have eliminated persistent cancer cells. If we do the same experiments 
with a standard of care, docetaxel, we do not prevent uh, relapses. So the conclusion is clear. Ironomycin eliminates persistent cancer cells and should be used in combination with conventional treatment to eliminate the whole tumor. Ironomycin is efficacious in hemato and solid tumors, as you can see here with our in vitro screening, but also validation in in vivo model. We have a strong intellectual property with five patents exclusively and worldwide licensed to the company, granted in four big areas and with the freedom to operate. We set up a clear clinical development plan uh, to start with the first uh, phase one uh, basket trial in non-Hodgkin lymphoma with an expansion cohort to get proof of concept data in H2 2025, a clear inflection point for the company. Then we will move into phase 1b2a in solid tumors related to our preclinical pipeline. Of interest, three big pharma are interested to partner with us when we will be in phase one. For uh, projections in market, we can think about recent deals uh, between biotech focused on drug targeting, uh, cancer resistance in the last 12 months and pharma. The company is managed by experienced people coming from biotech and pharma to bring our molecules from bench to the market. We have already secured 1 million euros to start preclinical and CNC investigations with our first batch already ready for investigations. And now we are looking for a 10 million Series A to pursue development activities, start regulatory discussions with FDA and EMA and structure the company with talents. So now it's your opportunity to join us because the futures of patients suffering from resistance in cancer is iron based. Lucy, that's Lucy, great. That's Thank you great. so much. Wonderful. Let's turn to our jury to open five minutes of questions. Over to our jury. With a show of hands, if you would like to ask any questions. Yes, Iris, and then Emma. Go ahead, Iris. Hello, um, thank you very much for the presentation. I have a question regarding the business model. You mentioned combination therapy to combine it with other solutions. My question is, have you been in touch with any pharma company? And if so, what kind of feedback have you received from them? Even though I, I know you are early. Of course. Yes, sure. Thank you for the questions. So first, regarding the combinations, I mentioned that it's of interest and for sure we have already validated that it works with our mo molecules in vivo. We have all the protections included in the patents and based on that, we have already presented data to pharma and really some of them are interested to really uh, come with us and partner when we will be in the phase one. Okay, thank you. Okay, um, maybe you can come with uh, my question. Um, yes, Emma, over very to you. interesting approach to, to resistant uh, cancer cells, of course. Maybe you can elaborate a bit further in terms of the specificity of the treatment towards these uh, resistant cancer cells. And also in relation to the combinations, as you mentioned, uh, how uh, drug, drug interactions have been assessed or if you consider that aspect. Yeah, thank you for all those points. So regarding the beginning, the specificity, as presented at the beginning, so persistent cancer cells have a really this dependency to iron. So when we use a concentration of uh, ironomycin and have an effect on persistent cancer cells, we have no effect on other cells. We have data for that. Uh, then, um, regarding something that I do not mention in the presentations, we have an iron score. This is like a biomarker that can identify patients at diagnosis that have this high metabolism uh, for iron and really have this uh, linked to uh, relapses, linked to this iron metabolisms. And this is something that we plan to develop during our phase one and something that we have presented to pharma. This is why they are interested by our molecule, because we have this marker to stratify 
the population during the clinical development. And regarding uh, so drug interactions, we have already uh, evaluated with PK uh, studies, clearly showing that we have no um, metabolisms uh, in hepatocytes, clearly showing that we will have no effect of our molecule so that we could combine our molecule with all other treatments. Yes, I uh, offer to Renato and then to Alan. And to yes, Julian. Uh, you we have, have mentioned that, 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 that yeah, there are some interests from uh, uh, pharmas around uh, your uh, technology once you get phase one. What kind of interest is more on the co-development, is more a direct investment? Uh, can you disclose us a bit more? Um, the boss, maybe. We have, when we discuss with pharma, uh, we discuss the two opportunities because already uh, we are in the, in the fundraising process and clearly the two opportunities are still uh, on the table at that time. And this is more what we would like to do with them in terms of our clinical development plan and maybe what could be their plan uh, at the moment we will discuss again with them. But the both are possible. Your question, please. Thank you, Lucy. That was very interesting. I guess uh, just a follow on uh, to Emma's question. Um, I guess as I was looking at the material and listening to your pitch, the, the specificity of the mode of action, given how critical our metabolism and metabolism is for normal cell function. Um, so perhaps you could tell us a little bit more, is there a, a, a specific target that's upregulated in these persistent cancer cells that allows a differentiation? Because I guess I do worry in advance of your toxicology about the therapeutic index that you might see. Yes, um, so regarding the tox effects, this is something that we have already uh, evaluated. And when we have in vivo effect with our molecule, we look at all the other uh, cells, but also hematological cells, and we have no tox effect on that cells. And clearly, um, there is more susceptibility from persistent cancer cells to our molecules compared to, uh, to all normal cells, if we can say that. So this is something that we have already investigated and we have data to prove that. Thank you very much, Lucy. Time's up. Oh, sorry, we can't get all our questions in uh, this morning for that. But timing is very strict. So let's move to our fourth pitch for, uh, to complete our first pitch sequence. And we're going to Belgium. We're going to meet Asilia Diagnostics with André Kemlevesky. I hope I pronounced that correctly, André. The floor is yours. Yeah, wonderful. Good afternoon. Everyone talk about precision medicine nowadays, but I will show you during presentation that it's actually possible and beneficial for all stakeholders. Icili is a precision medicine company with a goal to de-risk use and development of immunotherapy by making it more safe and effective. Checkpoint inhibitors immunotherapy is the best cancer treatment available in clinic, but it has a number of challenges. From clinical perspective, it's low efficacy where only 40% of patients respond to it, and up to 15% of patients have severe adverse event. From drug developer perspective, this is limited market share due to massive competition. Only for PD-1 checkpoint uh, uh, blockers, uh, there are more than 1,200 ongoing trials. Plus, low success rate and huge cost of clinical trials attributed to low efficacy and adverse events, making it very challenging to succeed. At the same time, there is no solution that can predict a drug efficacy and adverse events, making it an unmet need for all stakeholders. So this is an example of adverse events for Im immunotherapy. You can see PET-CT scans presenting patients before immunotherapy and two months after showing a massive progression of cancer due to treatment itself and leading to patient death. So key reason for adverse events and uh, low efficacy is heterogeneous population. That means that due to diverse molecular and clinical profile of our immune system, patients uh, respond differently to the same treatment. But we have a solution for that. We built molecular diagnostic uh, to stratify a patient into well-defined groups uh, uh, that can provide uh, guidance for the treatment and selection, treating only those patients who can benefit from the treatment. Same logic applies to clinical trials. By selecting only responders to clinical trial, we can make it more successful and cost-effective. 
So let's see how a solution works in clinic. Before admitting immunotherapy, doctor would use our test to check patient biopsy. Then our test analyzes patient molecular information and then translate it to the intuitive report that can guide clinician or clinical trial team to include or exclude patient uh, for the treatment. For clinician and patient, our solution increases treatment outcomes and reduce adverse events. Where for drug developers, it de risk and reduce cost of clinical trials and speed up uh, market access. Plus, it's increased market share after approval of the drug due to better pricing and earlier line of treatment. Two and a half million cancer patients need our test every year, resulting in 7.5 billion service obtainable market. We started with melanoma and lung cancer indication, but already built AI-enabled Invita Diagnostic Platform to scale our solution to other cancer indication. So this is the most important slide of my presentation. It's showing our first product validated molecular diagnostic for metastatic melanoma patients. Our diagnostic can boost or increase patient overall survival by nearly 40%. Overall survival is a key patient metric. That means that together with our solution, patient on immunotherapy treatment can get additional nine months of additional life extension, which is significant. As a benchmark, for example, even 6% is enough for FDA to approve novel drug or combination. We are delighted to show our result at ESMA, which is most well-known and most important Immune Oncology Congress in Europe. Our product is AI algorithmic diagnostic and novel biomarkers. We provide our diagnostic to hospital and pharma via clear lab and in vitro diagnostic partners who distribute and commercialize it. We make money by licensing our solution to IVD partners and get upfront fee plus royalties. Importantly, we have already global IVD and largest clear lab in the US, such as BD Life Science, Biocartis, Tempos, plus global pharma company Harbor Biomed and key opinion leaders from four leading EU hospitals uh, ready to pilot our solution. We have an amazing team with more than 50 years experience in AI biomarker development and immune oncology. Being part of Jensen Incubator, MassBio, IMEC and Matvin Elite programs, we have best-in-class mentors and advisors. We are super excited to provide precision medicine to patients in need. Just think about it. Every pharma and biotech company working in oncology has checkpoint inhibitors, PD-1 blockers in their portfolio, wishing to get either approval or increase market share. Our technology is the bridge to their success and success of patients. Please join our seed round. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you, André, for this extremely informative pitch. Well done. Let's now turn to our jury to take five minutes of questions. Jury, who would like to fire away? I can't see the jury right now. So um, perhaps I have a question. if you'd like to start, go ahead. Here we are. Very good. Please go ahead. Thanks, Andrew. Thanks for that, that uh, very clear presentation. I was wondering about uh, the validation of your technology. You mentioned uh, on one of the slides there were five trial data sets. I was wondering were there yep. any prospective studies uh, amongst these uh, validations and, and um, whether you think any will be required for regulatory approval? Wonderful question. Thank you very much. So at the moment, we use uh, retrospective uh, studies, as I mentioned, five uh, clinical studies in uh, uh, four hospitals uh, in Europe. And uh, it's enough for lab developed test uh, diagnostic in US and also in IVD, CIVD, uh, it's uh, more than enough. For, uh, for going further, for example, for FDA, it, that's required later on. Yes, yeah, CDX. Mm -hmm. Yes, Lina, over to you. Thank you very much. Very impressive presentation and uh, quite impressed with the, the increase in outcome actually that you showed. My question would be that you mentioned that for the pharma companies, your product would be interesting because it would help them to increase their market shares. Could you comment a little bit on how you would see that and why this would be an advantage? 
Yes, absolutely. So we know that uh, currently most of the pharma companies have uh, PD blockers in their portfolio. However, only like three or four uh, well-known, for example, Ketruda, M MSD. Uh, so uh, they have all envy and they want uh, market share. So uh, usually when you get a new drug without CDX uh, or biomarkers, uh, then your drug will get uh, used at the end of the line so you will be last uh, so for example for melanoma uh, third and fourth stage of melanoma you get at fourth uh, line of treatment with diagnostic and high efficacy you can get in the first line of treatment that's number one so that's obviously increased number of patients you get treated and number two uh, it actually possible to shift the application of the drug in earlier stage of cancer as well so let's say at phase two uh, you can get uh, 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 treatment uh, with CDX due to high efficacy. So obviously increasing market share. Who else? Yes, Iris, I see your hand is raised. Go ahead. Yeah, um, you mentioned uh, licensed deals in place and established collaborations. Can you go deeper into what it really means? Do you have any sales? Is it any kind of, so what's the deal? Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you very much. So we have terms with IVD partners at the moment, and uh, it's uh, initial terms. We're discussing uh, uh, with several partners, as I mentioned, and we have drafts. With uh, pharma, we have lot of intention, and we are working into including our um, uh, diagnostic to the clinical uh, stage, clinical trial stage at the moment. So uh, we have IP, so we have uh, uh, PCT filing, um, and basically it's a mother patent. Uh, and then we have daughter patents for every new diagnostic uh, uh, we're doing. Okay, so that's how it works. Yeah, mm -hmm. but the, the deals and collaborations are for validating the product or for starting some kind of commercialization of it? So it's it's going to be translation of the product and uh, it's going to be uh, yeah, more val validation. So we'll be okay. validating it uh, with hospitals, with IVD and with pharma. Okay, yeah. thank you. Thank you. Who would like Alan? Yes, please go ahead. Very interesting presentation. Thank you. Um, you know, obviously, you started with melanoma. The checkpoint inhibitors do tend to respond pretty well there. Um, I guess there's another application in terms of um, indications that don't respond as well to checkpoint inhibitors, and therefore you're helping the pharma industry perhaps coalesce and enrich that target group. Maybe you could speak to any thoughts you have in terms of that as a sort of a next wave of focus. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, melanoma... Um, yeah, it's it, it's actually um, with melanoma. By the way, there is no diagnostic. So patients who are not BRAF positive, they go straight away at, at stage three and four cancer. They go straight away for uh, immune checkpoint inhibitors treatment, which is sometimes uh, have really severe adverse events like uh, uh, hyperprogression. Yeah. Thank you very and much. Then <laughs> the time cancer. is up on the I'm so sorry, sorry, but we play the strict timing rule here. Thank you very much indeed. And thank you to the jury for their strong and specific questions. So that brings us to the end of our first pitch uh, session. Let's, let's remember who we have met so far today in our biotech semi-final at Catapult. We have met from Italy, ADAX Biosciences, developing and commercializing a non-carcinogenic and non-volatile fixative, an effective alternative to formalin, and thus improving the quality of life of thousands of um, medical operators and maybe more. Then we met Aplex Bio from Sweden. They are aiming to get the right treatment to the right patient in cancer treatments at a massive scale and as patients are unique, and so are their diseases. Then we went to France to meet Sideros, a preclinical stage biotech development, uh, developing breakthrough small molecules targeting iron metabolism to fight cancer resistance. And to complete our first sequence, we were in Belgium meeting Acilia Diagnostics, 
an AI-enabled diagnostics company focused on optimizing clinical management of cancer patients treated by ICIs. We are now going to take a short break, about 20 minutes, because at 11.40, we will be starting our second pitch session and meeting three new startups. So join us then, stay with us, and see you at 11.40 Central European time. See you then.